Hey crafty peeps, I have a fun summer and outdoor video coming up for you. And I'd also like to thank today's sponsor, Fairy Season. I'm gonna show you some super cute outfits that'll fit your budget and will be great for this coming warm season. All right, let's get into it. To start this wreath off, I am gonna use three of these fence um, looking I don't know what you would say, wood pieces, and this welcome sign that I picked up from Hobby Lobby. It's normally $3.99, and I think I picked it up half off for $2. I'm going to color the welcome, paint the welcome in maize by Waverly, and then I painted the fences with Rust-Oleum chalk paint in linen. Now I'm using partly E6000 as well as hot glue to add the welcome down to the fence. It gets really, really hot where I live, and so my wreaths have to be extra secure. Okay, so I got this wreath from Michaels. Can you even believe it was regularly $80? Like, I can't even believe it. The greenery on it isn't even like super high end, but I got it as part of one of their grab bags last after last spring. And I got three wreaths like this for $5. $5. That makes these, what, like a $1.75 a piece or something like that? Um, I did see that there were some things missing on it. Um, but you can see, it's just like one of the grapevine wreaths. Mm -hmm. So if you haven't had a magical find like this, you're just going to grab a, a grapevine wreath. And then you can just add your greenery to it. I'm cutting the little yellow stems off because they were only on one side, and so I'm going to make it more even. So now it's time to secure this, and like I said, it has to be secured really well. Um, our door opens and closes a lot, and it, like I said, it gets super hot here. So what I'm going to do, I'm feeding a couple leaves through just for a little extra adhering, and then I will... Um, glue those down and then I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to secure it even more. Now that that's secure, I'm going to add some yellow floral. This is um, floral that I picked up from Dollar Tree. And I'm going to cut apart each stem so that they're all single. And I'll just use my little wire cutters. And then I'm just going to poke them through. I don't even need to glue them in because of the type of wreath this is. They just like go right down into that grapevine and it's super easy.
second cause they're playing the best song I'll be there if you reach out to me once I get all these florals arranged how I like, I'm going to add some butterflies that came from Dollar Tree. They're part of like an outside decor piece. They were a little too big with the corrugated metal, so I just popped it right out, which is super easy. And I really like how it looks without it. And it just matches perfectly. And because it has two little metal pieces that was keeping it in the corrugated metal part, it's really easy just to add to this project and like um, just secure it with the metal. But I do add just a little bit of E6000 just to, just to make sure. So I had two of these. This These butterflies were actually on another wreath I made and I'm gonna reuse almost everything from that wreath um, on this project and the next project. So I will show you that wreath. I just wasn't a super big fan of it. And I made it before I realized what E6000 was and that it's too hot where I live and things will fall apart <laughs> and that wreath fell apart. And just for reference, this is the wreath I was talking about that I took apart. I wanted to show you a few items here from Fairy Season. So this tank has cute buttons down the side there and it's all one piece, but it looks like there's a little shirt underneath it. It's a little black and white stripes. And then up by the neckline, you'll see the little cheetah print pattern. And then I wanna share these shorts. They are high-waisted shorts. They fit really well. Um, I like that they're not too short. You're not seeing anything you shouldn't <laughs> okay and then the um the next item that i have tried on from fairy season is this denim overalls i love how overalls don't seem to ever go out of style i really also like the length of this one again nothing is hanging out that shouldn't also you will see um at the end of each item here i show in what it is on their site so you can see what a great price they are this is my absolute favorite in the haul this is a strapless romper and it has pockets it's very airy and flowy it is so so comfortable definitely definitely my favorite and, and oh i can't wait to wear it i will wear this so much this summer Okay, and then this dress right here has got the crisscross. Um, it's very flattering. Again, it goes just above the top of my knee, and then it has the cute ruffles that go down. Definitely cute date night dress for the summer. Okay, here's another dress. This is that uh, high-low look. Um, it's very stretchy, that top piece, and it also has adjustable straps. And you get kind of like a ruffle going down from the bottom. Um, this is like the blue and navy blue. Uh, oh, it's so comfortable and flowy. I absolutely love this one as well. Just want to let you know too that Fairy uh, Season goes up to a size 3XL. Uh, for reference, I am a large size 12 with a double D chest. Okay, now this shirt is just too cute. You can tie it closed or just wear those ties open. It has the ruffle sleeves and what a fun pattern. Very light and flowy as well. Here's another top. This one has a little underlay as well as a lace overlay and it's very pretty. Now for me, I'm petite in the shoulders so the straps are a little bit too wide for me. Um, I think this top would be really great maybe on a little bit more of a slender uh, figure or a wider frame. As you see here, I think it looks great on her. <laughs> Oh, here's another top. This one is very flowy as well. Has a really pretty lace detail at the top. Um, again, this one I think may look better on maybe a smaller chest to person because my chest is making it kind of flow out. Um, I think also it might be cute if I just tucked in these little sides here, put a little stitch. I may do that because it is a really cute top. I do, I do like it.
And then this is just a stretchy tank. It's not cotton. It's kind of more of the polyester feel. This is one of my absolute favorites in this haul as well. I like that it's longer, bright, fun. And lastly, this is the swimsuit. This is a tank top swimsuit halter. Um, it is, I do always size up in a bathing suit to an extra large. Um, I am not showing you the bottoms. They were a little too cheeky for me. <laughs> but the top is really cute. And honestly, I'd wear it as just a tank top around in the summer. It does have the pads in the chest. And it's still a fun swimsuit. Okay, and lastly, these are some fun rings. You get a pack of 12, and these earrings here as well also came in my haul, but I didn't show you. When you click the link down below, it'll take you to the page that shows all the items that I got in my haul, as well as all the other items that you have available for you. It takes approximately two weeks to get your order, and if you use code Lisa30, you will get 30% off your order. My friend sent me this inspiration, and I knew I had to make it. So I put out on Facebook, does anyone have a spare tire? Like hopefully like a like motorcycle size and a friend came through said they had one and so perfect. I picked up this like I don't know what they call these, like a garden like to hang a planter? A hanging planter piece? I don't know. So now yeah, I put this up on my fence beam here and um, just drilled it in with my cordless drill and it's a little um loose so I just take a hand screwdriver just to tighten it up here off camera and then here is my used motorcycle tire that would have just gone to waste so I'm using it in this project so you just hang it on here just like so and then I grabbed this little planter from Joann's last year on clearance for around two to three dollars but I see these everywhere and that's about the average price um, and so I just love the pink polka dots. So I used a pool noodle here, one that I just had left over in my stash, and I cut it down to fit inside the tire. And I'll use this like floral foam, and it fits perfect down in there because of course it's pool noodle right down in there. And so then I'm just gonna take some floral stems that I picked up from Dollar Tree, and I'm just gonna start cutting them down and adding them down in here. So if you looked in the inspiration piece, it was actual flowers. They put dirt in there and actual flowers, which is amazing, but I have a black thumb. And so growing real flowers is just not gonna happen. So I am just going to use some faux flowers in here and I can change them out when they fade with the season. And that's it. That is all there is to this project. It cost me $1 for the pool noodle, $3 for the flowers, and another 2 to $3 for that uh, watering can, which I'm not sure exactly how much I paid for it. So around 6 $7 for this project. Okay, for this first Cricut project, I'm going to open Design Space. And then I'm going to type in whatever I'm wanting to work on. And so I thought of pool hair, don't care. And I click that image and I bring it up into design space. Now I just want the words. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to ungroup this. And this is the mobile app that I'm working in. So all I do is now they're ungrouped and I can click on it and hit delete. Now this was a three, no, four part image. I cannot ungroup the pool hair, don't care. And I, when I cut this out, when I cut it on the um, Cricut Joy, I will end up just hand cutting between the hair and the don't because I want those more side by side. So once I have my image sized how I want, I go ahead and hit make it. Now. What's so cool about the Cricut Joy is it has smart like vinyl and HTV and all that and you don't have to put it on a mat, but you can also use it with a mat. 
So I have this now, now I'm going to choose which kind of material I'm using. And as you see there, it says smart vinyl, smart, you know, the different ones. So you can pick that. So once you've chosen that, your machine is ready to cut. So once it's, you've chosen it, it will um, ask you to load the HTV in this case to the machine. Now, something I forgot to do, and I do this, I swear, every time when I'm using HTV. And HTV stands for heat transfer vinyl, is you must mirror your image. Otherwise, when you're ironing it on, it would be backwards. So you want it to be backwards first when you cut it so that when you flip it over to iron it on, then you've got it going the correct way. And I seriously, I don't do heat transfer very often and I swear every time I forget to mirror it. And it took me a minute to find where to mirror in the mobile app because this is my first time using the mobile app. So as you see up in the top left corner, where it says one slash one and then there's a little arrow, you're gonna click on that. It's taking me a minute to find it here. <laughs> but, you know, do you ever do things the hard way and then you're like, I should just look it up. And then I looked it up and it's like, this is where you click on it. Is here, I'm like, where in the heck do you mirror? Okay, so like I said, up at the top corner. Once you click that, you will see the button to mirror the image. There you go. So see, now it's backwards. Now I can connect to my Joy again, and it does connect through Bluetooth. Now I can cut it out. So again, what I love about the Joy is its size. It's small. I use it with the mobile app. And so now here you see I'm loading in the heat transfer vinyl in this glitter. And this is the multi-glitter. It's so pretty. So it goes ahead and it cuts it out. And then I'll just weed it out. Um, and then I can transfer it onto the hat that I'm going to make. And this is what it looks like after I have weeded the vinyl off of it, the extra. And you see once I flip it over, it's going the correct way. So now I'm checking my heat guide to see how long that I need to um, press this down. And it lets you choose the different kinds of presses you have. And I just have the mini press. And then it tells you which material you're using. And then it will tell you how long that you need to press and what heat setting and all that. So this is a really great thing to help you figure that out. Now I am ironing it onto the hat. I already did the pool hair. I wanted to make sure I did it right before I showed you, so I'm showing you the second half. So I'm using the um, underneath heat mat that comes with the Cricut, and then I'm just using a tea towel on top because you want something between the iron and your decal. So I'm just using this tea towel that I picked up from Dollar General. It's so cute. And then you flip it over and you do the same on the other side. And once you've got that nice and heated on, it's just a matter of peeling off the paper. And look how cute this hat is. And by the way, that hat is from Dollar Tree.
And here's another inspiration piece that I found in a catalog and I thought it was super cute. So I picked this shovel up from one of those like vintage craft type stores for $3. And then I went on my Cricut in Design Space and I found this pre-made um, image that I cut out on my Cricut. And I will go ahead and I will put that down onto the shovel there. And it says bloom and grow. And then I will just take my flowers and I will wire those down to the handle and add a bow. And that's it for this project. Super easy again. But I think it just looks super cute in my yard. And in total, this one cost me around $5. Is there an easier way to make this bow? Probably. I'm terrible at making big fluffy bows, so I'm really good at making small ones, but the big fluffy ones, not so good at. So this is kind of my little cheat method, but I know there's much better ways. Also, originally I wanted to do this video more into the springtime, although technically it is still spring, but you know, time kids, all that, and I just now got to it this week, and it was 108 this week in Northern California. It was terrible, and so I had recorded this particular project a little while back, but the rest of the projects are kind of recorded differently than you may see here, and that is because my craft studio could not get the higher or wait lower than 82 degrees and most of the time it was around 90 degrees it was way too hot so I'm kind of taking I take some pictures and I did some stuff outside and yeah it was miserably hot but I'm really glad I finally was able to get to these projects because they make my backyard look so cute so anyhow you're gonna see me sweat you're gonna see things a little different because I just couldn't get that studio cooled down. So a new fan came today. I'm really hoping I can cool it down in there. So it is not attached to my house. It's attached to my house, but it's not attached to the inside of my house. And so it doesn't have air conditioning. So fingers crossed that I can record in there for the rest of the summer because it was super hot. All right, so back to this project. I'm just adding the bow. And then we'll put it in the yard and we'll be ready to go. For this next project, this is the supplies you're going to need, and I could get all of them at Dollar Tree except for the paint. So that is this deco mesh, and it's you're going to get red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, and white, and cut them all at 8 inches. And then you're going to need some um, 
oh my goodness, I always forget the pipe cleaners. You're going to need some pipe cleaners as well as a wreath form. And I'm going to cut this wreath form so that it's an arc instead of a circle. I used my tin snips here to cut it and I can do it. It's a little tough for me. And after I did the first one, my husband happened to be walking by and I was like, hey, could you cut this for me? And, you know, of course, you could just go clip, clip, clip. So thankfully, he was able to do that for me. Okay, so magic. All right, so this is how I'm going to um, layer my deco mesh. So I'm only going to take two and I'm going to use half a pipe cleaner to hold them together. And I just roll them up. Now, the way this works, because there's only four um, wires that you can see, you know, going uh, on the wreath form, but there's six colors. So I am reusing a wreath that I had done that was just yellow and orange. So all my yellow and orange were already put together. So my red is going to be all on its own. And then my orange and yellow are going to be together. My blue and green are going to be together. And then lastly, I will just have purple. Now this works because the top and bottom are solid, but they kind of flip back. And so it doesn't look like too um, saturated with color, I guess I want to say. So like I said, so the top is going to be red. The next layer is orange and yellow. The next layer is blue and green. And then the last layer is purple. And so I am just going to continue this until I make a rainbow. So there you can see the first rainbow. All right, look at here is all of the deco mesh that I have cut and I've just thrown it onto the floor. It's a beautiful color mess. <laughs> okay, so now I have all my deco mesh rolled up and tied together with the pipe cleaners. Now for the white, the white is gonna be our clouds. And so I'm going to take five of them and tie those together. And so I was able to do, with one roll of white, I was able to make four bundles of five. And so those will be the clouds. And now that the wreath is complete with the colors, I'm going to add the clouds to the bottom. And again, there's going to be two bundles on each side on the bottom. So thankfully I had this mirror in my stash from Dollar Tree, but the mirror broke, which is fine because I wasn't going to use it anyway. But normally in that circle there's a mirror. So I'm going to take my maize color from Waverly and I'm going to cover this whole thing. Now 
I don't know, this doesn't say it's chalk paint. It says it's a matte finish. So, I'm, oh no, it does say it's chalk paint. Never mind. Anyhow, it took three coats to cover this. So, that just seems like a lot. Normally, um, chalk paint covers better. But anyhow, I did have to put three coats on this. But it was worth it. I think it makes the perfect sun, doesn't it? Just be the perfect. I thought maybe I would just have something round that I would maybe make a sun out of. But anyhow. So I'm using these rub-ons from Dollar Tree. I love this font. I think it's so fun. And it to me, it's so perfect for a sunshine. So I am putting on Hello Sunshine. And I'm just going to rub these on. They work so well. I have been using rub-ons for years and years and years on my paper crafts. And this line from Dollar Tree works really well. You really don't have to rub it on too much but I am a perfectionist when it comes to rub-ons I want them to be like super rubbed on but it's really really easy and I just spell out I said hello sunshine and now it's just a matter of attaching our sun to the top of our rainbow wreath so I'm going to take it up there and I'm going to flip it over and I'm just going to use some more um, pipe cleaners to um, secure it. This sun is perfect because you can see there's tons of little squares or, I mean they're not perfect squares, but there's a ton of spots to feed the pipe cleaners through to tie it to this. So it was the absolute perfect find. So I hope you can find this mirror if you're going to do the sunshine because it literally could have been more perfect in how it was to attach it. And then I'll flip it over a little bit and add just a little bit of hot glue. Um, it didn't show that, my camera ran out, but anyhow, just a little hot glue um, for an extra secure. But other than that, I'm just putting it on with these um, pipe cleaners. And you can use zip ties too if you like. Um, I just have pipe cleaners. These were from Christmas, but they worked. Anyhow, that is it. I thought this was such a fun and bright wreath for spring and summer. For this project, I opened Design Space again and I chose Confetti Sprinkles to use as my font. And I just cut out these words with the white vinyl. And here's where I just used it right on the mat because I didn't have any of their smart vinyl. So I used my regular vinyl, cut it down to size, and used their little mini mat that you see there on the left. And so I cut out the words, life is better by the pool. Now, because I didn't have the smart vinyl, I um, did have to cut this out in um, little pieces because I could only fit four letters on the mat. So no problem, I just cut each one out that way. And now I'm taking these trays from Dollar Tree. As soon as I saw them, I knew I was gonna make a sign uh, because I love the colors. And so these are just their little trays um, and all I'm doing See, I'm just putting the vinyl right down on the tray. And what's great about this is I can put it outside and it will be waterproof because when I make regular signs, you know, with cardboard or anything like that, they're going to get ruined by the elements. And so once I get all of them on, I will put them up and down like this and look at how pretty those colors are for um, my backyard. And then I have this um, ribbon here. I believe it's from Michael's. Jones. But anyhow, I'm going to use it. And I picked yellow because I thought it was a good complementary color for my summer sign here. So I'm just rolling out trying to decide how much of the ribbon I need. And then I am going to flip this over and I'm going to glue it down on the back. So I'm going to use E6000 
as well as just a little bit of hot glue for the temporary hold. You definitely don't want to use just hot glue because this will be sitting out in the summer sun and it will melt and your sign will fall apart. So definitely use the E6000 or something of that nature, super glue, Gorilla glue, something of that nature. Now it has these little, as you can see, these little um, L's. What makes it super easy to line up my ribbon so all of my ribbon will be exactly in the same place on each sign. So that was a little uh, extra bonus. So I'm just going to go up one side and down the other and that's it and the sign will be done. I could have added bows or different things but I just felt like this should be a fun simple, si simple sign <laughs> to put out by my pool. I'm so excited when I found these wagon wheel wreath forms at Dollar Tree. And ironically, I had just seen this item online and I wanted to recreate it. But I kind of made a little twist on it and I decided to make it a statement piece on, a, on the fence itself. So I went ahead and I took these wagon wheels and I formed a pattern out on my floor. And so you see here, I used seven of them. Then I decided I'm going to use my outdoor acrylic paints from Magic Fly and I'm going to paint them in a rainbow. And what I love about these paints is they are water resistant. You can put them outside and they're nice and vibrant. So I went ahead and I painted one red and then orange and yellow and green, blue purple, and violet. And then I go ahead and I use some zip ties and I put them all together and I cut off the excess. That's it. And then I can hang it on my fence. I just thought it added some fun color to my fence and I just love the bright colors. So I got these little popsicle sticks here from Joann's and I painted them green, pink, and yellow and I attached them at the top. I got this big popsicle stick from Hobby Lobby on clearance and the Chase the Sun from Joann's as well, which I painted and attached. This is the square Dollar Tree form and I went ahead and I glued it on this top form there. And then I glued the pipe cleaners to the popsicle and then around the wreath form. The way I attached all the flowers is they had wire um, in their stems and so I just pushed them in where I liked them and then I just twisted the wire around the wreath form. And this was super easy. Um, I just went around and did that with each one. Here again, I'm showing you how I took the pipe cleaners just to add extra durability to gluing them on. I mean, I went all out because it's very hot here and I didn't want them to fall off. Again, you can see here how I wrapped the stems from the flowers around and I just did this all the way around until I got the look that I wanted. With the small little pink ones, I just hot glued. For this project, I'm going to take some of these a garden... I don't know what you would call them, little fence things from Dollar Tree. And I'm going to cut off the bottoms and the sides. So this project is inspired by Barb over at the Shabby Tree. And then after I was inspired by her, I saw that Olivia made them over at Olivia's Romantic Home. And so this is my take on the solar chandelier. So I saw... Um, like I said, similar setup, and I knew I had to make one, and so this is my take. 
So I took one and a half of these garden fences and I will take um, and use some zip ties to um, connect them and make a circle. I'm going to cut off the excess here and make it into a round circle. At first it's going to seem like this is not going to go into a circle but once I'm able to zip tie it down to the splatter screen it will be a circle. So with that being said, the next step is using a splatter screen. And I grabbed one that has um, the little knob. I'm actually kind of excited that I don't need it because I'm gonna use that for another project. So I will go ahead and I will set this on top. And I used my little mini screwdriver just to make a little bit of a hole so that I could fit through my zip ties. And I will go ahead and I will zip tie this fencing down to my spire screen. And once I get that all together, I'm going to spray paint it with the same turquoise color I used on the ladder. And this is how it turns out. I love this color. So I'll go ahead and I will flip it over. And another thing I got from the 99 cent store is this lay slash garland. I need a lot here for 99 cents. I was really excited to find this. And I don't even need the whole thing. So I'll go ahead and cut it down. And just so the leaves didn't fall off of the garland, I'll go ahead and put a little piece, not a piece, but a little squirt of hot glue so that it doesn't come unraveled. And then I'll go ahead and I will adhere that down to the top. And because this is going to be an outdoor piece, I don't want to use solely hot glue or it will fall off. So I will use mostly E6000 to adhere this down. But I will also use some hot glue just for some instant bond. Okay, so here's a little tip for Dollar Tree solar lights. You want to pop this out, turn it around, and that is what gives you a stake to put in the ground. I did not know that at first. You can also unscrew it. You also want to make sure that these tabs are in any lights that you buy before you buy it. You will pull the tab and that will activate your light. Okay, so now I'm going to um, see here how big of a hole I need to make. And the way I start making the hole is by making an X. And I will just continue to make that X bigger and then I can just poke it down. After all said and done, these beautiful blue lights that I had originally picked up just don't quite work on this project. So I went back to just their typical, regular, clear lights because that is what was going to work better on this project. They have lots of different designs and shapes. They have ones with little bulbs, like little circle, like sphere bulbs. They have shapes. A lot of really good solar lights. Then I just take one of these chains that I also bought at Dollar Tree, and all I have to do is just hook it to three sides, and this will hang. All right, as you see there. Once I get that down, I'll go ahead and add my flowers. These purple peony, peonies, peony, did I say that right? Oh my goodness, they're so pretty, and I love them against the green and turquoise. So now I'm just going to make kind of a, a hole here. I don't have to make too big of a hole and I'll just feed that stem down into that hole. I'm just going to start cutting all of the um, stems here just to see how many I'm going to need to fill all the way around my lantern. I'm just dying over this purple. I love this color so much. Once I get them all 
step down into my splatter screen, I'm going to go ahead and flip it over. And I will go ahead and twist the little stems here, as you can see, so that they don't fall out. So I don't need to use any glue or anything because they are, they've gone down through the splatter screen and then they've been twisted and so they're nice and secure. And that's it. This project's done. I just hang it out into the sun. It gets its sun all day and then the lights will go on at night. And I just think it's so beautiful. I love these colors so much. So this is what it looks like during the day and this is what it looks like at night. Look at how bright those lights are. I was pleasantly surprised that it took three lights and look at that, so bright. Love it, love it, love it. I wanted to show you how fun paper piecing is. So I opened up Design Space again and I searched for summer and I found this image and it was so cute. So what it does is it tells you each color that you're gonna put into the Cricut and it will cut for you and then you layer the pieces together. Now it looks intimidating, but I promise you it's super easy and it's really fun. So I just grabbed these little um, pieces out of my scrapbook paper. And as you can see, you don't even need the whole sheet. On some of those, it's really tiny and you can just cut a small strip of paper and add it to your mat. And so now it's gonna tell me which one I'm cutting and which color. So here is my gonna be my base layer and this is going to be white. So we'll go ahead and I will get that going through the Cricut Joy and cut it out. Now I have actually been a scrapbooker for 25 years. I hate to age myself like that, but scrapbooking is my first passion and I really love incorporating paper crafts into my everyday decor as well. And so I've actually been a Cricut customer for as pretty much as long as they have been out, which I believe was 2003. So I have been a customer for a very long time. So you're seeing me struggle getting that off the mat, and that's only because I was trying to do it with one hand while I filmed with the other hand. But I promise you, it's really easy to and peel off the paper off the mat. So I'm going to go ahead and feed all the other colors through and get those cut out as well. So what I like about the Cricut Joy with paper crafting is how small it is and how easy it is to travel with because I do go to a scrapbooking retreat at least once a year if not twice and that's where I spend a whole weekend just scrapbooking and it's literally like my favorite thing to do. I highly recommend it. You don't even have to scrapbook at these. You can do other crafts as well, but most of the people that attend are scrapbookers. And so it's a way for me not to get too far behind on scrapbooking, um, but let's face it, I'm many, many, many years behind. So here's my first layer, then that's my second layer adding it on, third layer, and now I'm gonna start adding the words. You just can, you can see right where they go, the little flag, and now it's all put together. It was super easy to put together. Now I'm gonna make my sign. So I bought this kit from the Target Dollar Spot at Christmas and it came with four of those double-sided signs. Okay, real quick, I just wanna show you. This is the kit I used. It's Splash um, by Echo Park. I will link it below. I just received it, so it should still be on their site. And now I'm just gonna start laying down pieces of paper until I get a fun look I like. So now back to what this is I'm working on. So it's a four pack of double-sided signs and they're all Christmassy. Well, I only need one Christmas one. I don't need eight Christmas signs. So what I've been doing is for each holiday that comes up, I go ahead and I make over one of these signs. And so next year, every time a new holiday comes by, I'll have a new sign to add to um, this project. So again, I don't need eight Christmas ones. I only need one. So it's been really fun to make these little signs over. So I'm just going to take the pattern papers and mix them. Mixing pattern papers is my favorite. It's so fun. Now I'm keeping this one pretty simple. I didn't want to overdo it, but there's definitely a million more elements I could have added. But again, I just wanted to keep it fairly simple. And so as you see, I've just added three pieces of paper down there at the bottom. 
and then I'll have a little strip that I add here at the top. Now that picture that I'm highlighting is from our recent trip to Mexico. We had such a good time and they had a photographer at the resort and so we had professional family photos done and I am so glad I did. It was worth every penny. It's so fun. So I cut out this yellow circle. It was kind of to mimic the sun and then I'll go ahead and add the picture down. I'm using a Tombow um, adhesive. It's a double stick adhesive. It's just super easy to use. I've been using these for who knows 15 years. I love them. So I will also link those down below. Then I just add my Here Comes the Sign that I've made earlier here on the Cricut and this sign is pretty much done. I just have to put the holes back in at the top and then I can hang it on my wall. I also wanted to let you know that you can come join me over on Instagram where my name over there is dollar underscore underscore mom and I share all my DIYs, my hauls, as well as my personal life. You could have seen all these pictures that from Mexico as well as while I was in Mexico. So I hope you'll join me over there. I have a lot of fun. And For this project, I picked up two of these eight foot by two and a half inch boards from Lowe's, and I'm going to cut them at five feet. And so what I'm gonna do is make a decorative ladder. On a side note, I wanna put a little disclaimer here, because you're probably wondering, is she pregnant? And no, I'm not pregnant. <laughs> So as I'm cutting these here, I'm going to tell you about this. So I have had two different hernia surgeries in the last year and a half. And the unfortunate side effect is a swollen belly. So I didn't want anyone to think I was pregnant and wish me congratulations or something. So, you know, it's just one of those side effects in life. So whatever, I'll take it because I'm way healthier now. Okay, back to the DIY. So I'm cutting these down, like I said, at five feet. So I'm gonna cut two of these boards. Again, I'm having so much fun with this miter saw. It's just like opened a whole new world to me. I highly recommend pushing yourself out of a comfort zone. Okay, so this stick here was left over from a teepee that broke, like a play teepee. So of course I held on to it because it was wood. And so I unscrewed that little metal thing you saw in the last bit there. And then I cut these down to 16 inches. And so I cut four of these. And so I will cut four at 16 inches. So again, just kind of a little dowel that I had in my stash. Okay, so now I've marked every foot on my five foot board. So there's going to be four marks, each 12 inches apart. And then I'm gonna drill a hole in those four um, spots. So that'll be where my rungs go. And so once I get all those holes drilled, I can go ahead and screw in the rung. So I'm gonna just give it a little bit of a start with my wood screw here just to get it going. And then I'll take the little dowel roll dowel rod and hold it into place while I screw that in. I have never done anything like this. I didn't totally even know what I was doing. <laughs> so there's probably a better way to do this. I just kind of want to show you how like I just jumped in and tried it to see what would happen. Okay, so now it's time to do the other side. So I held it, or I set it down here on my patio table and I will drill the other side in. So I start with the top and the bottom first just to get a nice sturdy base, and then I'll do the two middle ones. All right, and there we go. There's my little decorative uh, ladder. And I'm gonna paint it with this Rust-Oleum chalk paint. I will put the color down in the comments. Okay, once that's done, I've added these three baskets 
that I found at the 99 cent store for $1.49 each. Then I'm going to take some of the floral foam and some Spanish moss and use some baskets from Dollar Tree. I take a little bit of both and put them in the bottom of the basket. Then I'm going to add these floral stems and I will use two total. And then I will repeat this for two more baskets. Then I'm gonna use this farmer's market sign also from Dollar Tree and cut it apart. And make a little banner for the top of the ladder and use a staple gun to attach it. And that's it, I put my little floral baskets inside the white hanging baskets. And this is what you get. I found a green basket and filled with green flowers yellow basket with yellow and a red basket with red and hung them from this bright blue ladder and with the sign at top. I think this looks so nice in my backyard. It just brightens it all up. I love, love, love it. And I can just pop the baskets out and add new florals or once it's winter, I can bring those flowers in. So I'm really happy with how this decorative ladder turned out. I love grabbing things off Facebook Marketplace and someone posted this window for free. I did not realize how giant it was because I thought it was probably a lot smaller, but it's big. It's very, very big. So I brought it inside my house. I cleaned it up as best as I can. It is dual pane, so it's dirty inside between the layers, but that's all right. Then I opened up design space on my Cricut and I just started pulling in some images and I measured them out real big. These are the images I use and I will put those down in the description. So once I cut all of those out, I used some glossy permanent vinyl and I set it up here on my window and then I will put them down. Now to measure, I just use a dry erase marker and I can just wipe it off when I'm done. So it's just really easy to get things nice and even. And this is how it turned out. Super simple. Basically a free project. It only cost me vinyl. I just love how this is going to look in my yard. And that's it. Okay, now for the next project. So I used some more of those Joanne fabric um, wood pieces. This super cute um, scrapbook kit that I found. I I think at Michael's. It's called Good Eats by Die Cuts with a View and I will link it down below. I found it on several sites. This paper is so cute. It's all sorts of fair foods. You know, you've got your pretzels and your, well I guess bacon and eggs isn't <laughs> really fair foods, but tacos and pizza and donuts and all sorts of fun stuff. And I'm going to take this and I'm going to make over one of these Dollar Tree houses. And so I chose this little ice cream chuck looking paper. <laughs> oh, it's double sided and sometimes there's like the cutest stuff on the back side. <clears throat> and so then they have these cute different sayings and so I picked one of the um, frames out of this kit that I will use um, to decorate this house. So first I'm just going to give this Good Vibes wood piece um, some hot pink paint and I'll set that aside while it dries. And then I'm going to go ahead and, oh look at how cute this paper is. It's embossed so it's shiny. I'm also going to try to make it so that I can keep that back side. So I'm going to take my house and I'm going to outline it so that it will fit inside. I'm going to go ahead and draw that and then cut it out. So as you can see, it's not going to quite fit, so I have to measure the width around the house, which I do believe was about a quarter inch. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to mark that all the way around the house that I've already cut out, and then it will fit inside.
Now I'm going to measure around the side of the house so that I can cut the paper that I'm going to Mod Podge around the house. And I measure this for you and I will show you the measurement in a second. I think it was an inch and a quarter, but don't quote me on that. And then um, I will cut the paper out of that. And then I'm going to measure again the front of the house and cut paper for that. Oh, it was one and a half. See, don't quote me, one and a half inches. So I'll go ahead and cut a couple strips out of this paper for the one and a half inches. And like I said, I'm going to cut these tiny little strips out to put on the front of the house um, as a border. At first I thought maybe I would paint it, but since I had this cute paper, I decided to do it this way. So go ahead and measure that and then cut out the little strips. I wanted this piece to pop a little bit because it's a white piece so I go ahead and I just use some double stick tape and I put it down on this cute pink paper and that'll just give it a nice little mat to it and I didn't really measure it I just kind of eyeballed it and again this will just give it a little bit more of a pop and this is where I will attach the good vibes onto this okay so now that I have all my pieces cut out I'm going to take some Mod Podge and I'm going to um, put that on here and attach all the little pieces of paper. Okay, now it's time just to attach everything else. I'm just going to use some regular Elmer's glue to attach this good vibes onto the piece of paper. And I didn't mention this before, but I painted this popsicle stick when I was painting the other popsicle sticks for the wreath. And so I had that ready to go. I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to adhere everything down and then this cute Dollar Tree house makeover will be done.
make sure when you are hot gluing on a piece like this that you don't have it hanging over the bottom, otherwise it will not stand up straight. Okay, and there it is, cute, good vibes. Loving, loving this project. I picked up this piece from the Dollar Tree. It is sits on your table. So I'm gonna go ahead and I marked around the edges and I'm gonna go ahead and drill holes into that. It was super hot and I had to do this outside, so I went in my backyard. I literally had to jump in the pool beforehand because I think it was 108 that day. So you kind of see me with my wet hair and you know there's my doggies playing in the background but i just easily went through this and drilled a hole all around just like that and i went ahead and did it all the way around the edges okay and just so you know it looks like i used this drill bit it's the 15 over 64. i do not know a lot about drill bits but that was the one that made the perfect size hole for the Dollar Tree wood dowels that I go ahead and stick in here. And those are these, and you can find them in the craft section at the Dollar Tree. So I'm gonna go ahead and take these out, and I'm just gonna make sure at first they fit into the holes, and they did perfectly. And then I'm gonna just take some wood glue, and I'm gonna go ahead and secure those into the holes after I take the labels off. Now I'm going to cover this with a coat of yellow paint. This is the paint I had on hand, but it's really more for like canvas painting. It was absolutely terrible for this project. So just stick with your regular, you know, Apple Barrel Walmart paint. Um, like I said, this was really meant for a canvas. And so it was really um, kind of like sticky and it took like three coats, so not the best um, paint. I used on another project just the regular paint and it worked perfect. So don't make my mistake, but it really is a great color of yellow. So again, I think I had to use three coats of this. Now I take the rub-on letters from the Dollar Tree and I cut out Hello Sunshine. I typically, start with the middle letter and then I will put that where I think the center of my project is and then that's where I will start rubbing these on. Now this is where this paint was terrible because it was so like sticky it took these letters and it like practically glued them down before I could do anything about moving them in place. So you're going to see me struggle a little bit here and that's just because this paint, like I said, was really sticky. On the next project, with my regular paint, it was really easy to position these and move them around. But anyhow, um, these stuck really well, I'll say that. So I go ahead and I just rub these on and then you peel the top layer off. I just want to make sure you know these rub-ons are actually super easy to use. It was the paint. That is what you'll see me struggle with here, but these rub-ons are actually really good. They just, you lay them down, you rub them on, you take them off, and they look awesome. So don't take this as any kind of discouragement other than do not use the kind of paint you're supposed to paint on a canvas on your wood project.
I thought it was funny that the sun actually started pouring through my window as I was making this project. Um, so, you know, I think that that was a sign that hello sunshine <laughs> and here we go that is the finished project I love it okay so now I'm gonna do something similar I found this little piece of scrap wood in my supplies I buy my scrap wood off of Facebook marketplace people that do woodworking sell their scraps works perfect so I drilled another hole in the bottom of this one just like in that last project and I stuck a dowel through it and now I'm gonna make a popsicle so here we go. I'm using the kind of paint you should use and that's just the cheapy bottled Walmart paint and it works so much better. So once I get this all painted, um, it even dries fast. I only needed one coat and I go ahead and I cut the letters popsicle out and I go ahead and rub those on just like I did on the last project, but I had a much easier time now with this kind of paint. I'm just going to add this yellow, yellow golden bow onto this just to give it a little bit of a pop. And then, huh, I said pop. And it's just going to make this popsicle just a cute little addition to your summer decor. Most of these projects are from Dollar Tree and super easy to make. Let's get crafting. For this first project, I'm going to take these letters that I picked up from Hobby Lobby. They were $1.99 each, but they were half off, so they just cost me a dollar a piece. And then I'm going to take um, some paint here in this creamy color and I'm going to paint the bottom half of my letters with that and it's going to look like the ice cream cone. So I'll go ahead and I will coat all of the letters again just about halfway down. And now using the three colors you see there, which is pink, purple, and blue, I will paint the top halves now and that will be looking like my ice cream. Now I'm just grabbing this plastic stick I have and I'm going to make little sprinkles. 
I mean, in hindsight, I wouldn't have used this tool, but once I did it, I was kind of committed. But I would use maybe a little brush or I'm not sure if a toothpick would work, but just something I was trying to make little like rectangle little sprinkles. So I just use the opposite colors on each one. So on the pink, I'm just using the blue and purple and white. I added that in to make little sprinkles. And then after I get all my sprinkles on, I'm going to take a brown marker and I'm going to make the diagonal stripes at the bottom of the letter to look like a cone. I did not have a brown sharpie or I couldn't find my brown sharpie so I used a brown marker. I don't recommend it. I recommend using a sharpie if you can. But if you're patient and you use your marker just make sure you don't smear it so that it has time to dry. Um, so definitely let it dry in between um, your layers. So I'm going to do all my diagonals in this direction and then I'm going to let it dry and then I'm going to flip it and I will draw it in the opposite direction. And this is how they turn out when they are all finished. And then I took a terracotta pot and I used the same technique um, as I did with the letters and just painted ice cream on the top and then again made the bottom look like a cone. For this project, I wanted to make an ice cream truck. So I found these ambulances at Dollar Tree, this little one here, and then this bigger one. So I decided to go with the bigger one. So I take this ambulance and I go ahead and I peel off all of the little stickers that it has on it. And this is what it looks like after the stickers are off. So then I take some paint, and now this is the same color paint I've been using previously. So I painted the top of the ambulance with this blue color, and then the pink stripes down, um, you know, on the bottom there. And then I kind of covered those red lights with that creamy color. So what I then I what I plan to do is to take my Cricut and do some vinyl lettering and whatnot. So I cut something for the side of the truck, the front of the truck, and then I just cut a strip of my vinyl and that's what's going to go between the blue layer and then the pink stripe layer to just give it that finished look. So this is what I come up with on my uh, Cricut cutter is these three little ice cream cones and those will go on the hood. I wasn't sure if these were going to cut out because they're so tiny and I thought, well, I don't know. And then this is what's going to go on the side. Okay, so here is where I had an oopsie. When I put the vinyl down, it took off the paint. So I repainted it. And then I put matte Mod Podge over the whole thing. And then it took my vinyls like a jam. So here you can see it with the strip along and then the two cute decals. I picked up these signs from um, Dollar Tree. They're super cute on their own, but they really don't fit into any of my decor. So this is gonna be perfect. And then I picked up these stickers at Hobby Lobby. They're normally $4.99 and I got them half off, so they were $2.50. <laughs> so I'm popping out the middle here onto the sign and I will go ahead and just kind of tear up tear off this front layer and I'm going to cover it so it doesn't have to be super smooth or anything like that and so I'm going to do that with each of these signs. Now I went to my printer and I went on and I just printed out um, some words that I typed out in this I use a couple different fonts and then I just printed it out onto cardstock and I'll simply just take my glue stick and glue it onto the front of this. And then once I get that all centered, 
and that's good. I'll take some hot glue here and then put it around the inside. And you want to make sure it's very thin layer because you don't want it to squish out. And then I'll put the little saying back inside the frame. Now, if you can't find this exact frame, Dollar Tree has so many cute little frames like this that it shouldn't be too much trouble to find something similar. And so then once I get that all in there, this is where the stickers come in. And I actually kind of forgot to uh, measure the stickers in a little bit, but my plan was to put the ice creams on each side there, and it ended up turning out really cute. And then for the other sign, I did it off screen, so you didn't have to watch me do the same thing again. And I just typed out Kennedy Family Creamery and added one of the stickers. I had bought a case of these gnomes from Dollar Tree because they were so cute and I've seen you know that people can paint them and then I saw on Etsy somebody made an ice cream gnome and so I wanted to recreate that and so using the same paints that I've been using I went ahead and painted this gnome to look like an ice cream cone. Dollar Tree has such fun, bright colors of spoons and whatnot, and so I took these and I added some vinyl, and this is what I got. When lights go out For this project, you're going to need a plastic pot that I got at the Dollar Tree, along with this wreath form that I also got at the Dollar Tree. You're going to need these plastic um, necklaces. They come in a six pack. I used three packs for the chandelier itself, and then another three necklaces to hang. So if you use all those, you are going to need four packs. And then this light set that I got off Amazon, and I will link below, and that's where the party's going to be at. And then some black wire that I also got from the Dollar Tree. Okay, so when you flip over the pot, there is going to be some little circles that say punch here, and that's to let your water through if you ever have an actual plant in it. But we're going to pop them out because this is going to be the holes that we um, put the necklaces through to hang from our, well, in my case, a canopy, but in your case, wherever you want to hang it from. So once I make those holes, I'm now going to put my rim on, which is this wreath form. It fits perfectly over this pot. It's awesome. So I want to make sure, though, that it is adhered nice and firm. So I'm going to take my little puncher here. This is actually called a paper piercer. It's a scrapbook tool, but really it's just a sharp metal tool. And I do believe the Dollar Tree carries these. 
So I'm going to make a hole about every four inches or so. And I'm going to do that all the way around. Once I have all my holes punched in, I'm going to take my wreath form and I will put it back over the top of my pot, as you see here. And then I'm going to take some of this black wire, and I found this wire in the automotive type department, the hardware part of the Dollar Tree. Alright, so I'm hoping that you can see this. It's kind of difficult because everything is black. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to feed one end of the wire through the hole that I just made. I'm going to take the other end of the wire and I'm going to wrap it around the wreath form. And then I'm going to feed that wire back through the hole that I just put the top part in. Okay, so I know that's kind of confusing. So you're basically going to have this piece of wire, both ends are going to go through the same hole, but your wreath form is going through the middle. I know, that sounds confusing. So I'm really hoping that you can see what I'm doing here. Once you get the wire around your frame, you're just going to kind of twist and bend to give it so that it won't slip right back through the hole you just made. Okay, and now you're going to make, you're going to do this through all the holes that you just punched. Go ahead and cut off any excess wire that you don't need and that's sticking out. So again, you're feeding it through and you're wrapping it around the frame and you're feeding it back through the pot. Okay, so, so hope you can see what I'm doing here. If you're confused at all, please leave me a comment, ask me a question. I'm happy to try to explain it. All right, so now that that is secure, it's time to hang the beads. This is a party chandelier after all. So we're gonna have a bunch of beads hanging from our wreath frame. So what I'm gonna do to start off with, there is going to be three strands per section. And I think you can clearly see how there's three there's sections in this wreath form, you can see by the line that goes across. Okay, so on our inner part, our closest part to the pot, I'm going to cut the beads down a little bit because that's gonna be the beads that drape the shortest, if that makes sense, I hope so. All right, and then I'm popping off just the little um, connectors to these beads just to make one long strand. So I'm gonna cut this strand a little bit shorter because like I said, I want it to hang shorter than the other layers. So right here, just cutting it. I'd already cut one, that's why you see me measuring against it. Okay, so once I get that cut, I'm going to feed it through the wreath form. Again, closest to the pot. You wanna make sure you feed it on the outside of the line coming down on both sides. So this is going to keep it secure in the space that it's going to go. All right, you see this here? Okay, now I'm going to need to connect these beads back together. You could connect them back together with that little plastic piece I popped off, but I didn't want to see that little plastic piece. So instead, I take a little bit more of this wire, and I'm just going to wire the two beads that are separate back together. Just take a little piece, don't need much, but sometimes it's better to have more than less. And I'm just gonna kind of make a V around one of the beads. So this is gonna be from the last bead and the bead before that, so right between them. I'm just gonna, like you see here, I'm just making a V and then I'm just gonna twist that so that the wire doesn't slip off. And then if you need to, just pinch it with some needle nose pliers just to make sure that that wire is not going anywhere. Okay, and I'm gonna take my other side of my bead and I'm gonna feed that through. And again, I'm just gonna twist this wire all the way around. And I'm just gonna try to make this as flat as possible. It's not gonna be super pretty, but we're gonna kind of hide that part um, this part's not going to be the part that dangles, so you won't really see it. 
And I'm just going to kind of twist this wire around to make sure everything's secure and there's no pokies, anything you can catch your finger on. Okay, there we go. Now this is where they're together and you can see it's not perfect, but that's okay. It's going to, where I'm going to hang it, it won't matter. We just want it to be back to a necklace type size. Okay, so here you see it hanging and I'm just pulling them down to try to get them to hang differently. That's kind of the fun part. Once they're all attached, you can pull and see how you like how they hang. Okay, so now I'm gonna take my second strand, and this, I'm not gonna cut this one. In fact, the next two, I'm not gonna cut. Only the one I just did. Okay, now I have the second section here. I'm going to feed it up through this part. You can see there's three sections. So this is the middle section. Feeding it up. Feed it up through the other side. Okay. All right, and now we're going to connect this back together so that it's back like a necklace. I'm going to use the same method. I used just a moment ago and that's take a little piece of wire I'm going to wrap it around between the last bead and the bead before it make a little V and I'm gonna twist it to make sure that it stays on tight and then I'm going to add the other side of the bead Let's see, I'm gonna get ahead of myself here. Let's just get this one twisted. And then again, just pinch with your needle nose pliers just to make sure it's nice and tight and it's not gonna slip out. And then you're gonna go back to the other side in between the two beads. And go ahead and twist that wire and pinch with the pliers. Periodically, I will just pick it up and see how everything's hanging. And I pull it so that the part that we just put together is actually up at the top, right where you're gonna, it's gonna hang over um, its wire part. And then you can't tell that it's a little bit mm, not flat, I guess I would say. I really hope you guys can see this. It's kind of hard to explain, but uh, Anyhow, so I'm going to grab my third um, necklace for this layer, and this will be the last one for this section. I'm just going to repeat what I've done with the last two necklaces, but just in this section. And then once this section is done, I'm just going to repeat these three steps on each section all the way around. Okay, so while you guys are watching me do this step again, I'm just going to tell you some different things you can do with this. Um, I kept all the colors as is. Um, you could actually, these necklaces come in like red and green and blue, gold I think. So you could actually do each section a different color. You could do the ones closest, you know, red and then the middle section silver and the farthest one blue and have like a 4th of July uh, party lantern, party chandelier I guess is what I'm calling it. Um, you could uh, spray paint the whole thing one color so that your pot 
in your beads, in your uh, rim, the wreath rim are all the same color. So it kind of has a lot of different um, things you can do. In fact, I made a whole nother video of making this more high end and doing all neutral colors with the nautical rope and wood beads instead of these plastic beads. You can really step the chandelier up. So this one I just wanted to keep fun. It's gonna go outside. Um, it's gonna have a bright lights under it. So I kept it more party-ish. But you can definitely change the colors around, um, add more to make it a little more high-end. Okay, so now I've put the beads all the way around the rim. I know it kind of looks like craziness, all these beads. But when it's hanging, it looks really cool. So, now that that's all done, I'm going to put the um, hanging part in. Okay, so I've got those three holes. So I'm going to take three necklaces. Now this is going to make a really long string. But I didn't know how low I was going to hang mine. So keep it long until you know how far you're going to hang it. And then you can cut it because these are super easy to cut. So I'm just going to feed the beads through these holes. These were pretty tight holes, which is good. You want them tight, but not too tight that you can't push the bead through. So um, my fingers are pretty weak. So I was having a little hard time pushing the bead through the hole. Um, so I just grabbed one of my tools and kind of pushed with that and it went right in. And so once it's down in there, you'll see it's nice and secure. Now, if you want to just take extra precaution, you could put some hot glue on the inside, um, just to glue it a little more. Although, if your area gets really hot, that glue's probably going to melt anyway. Um, but there's some different options you can put underneath to really secure it. But this worked for me, and so far, it's been a good week, and mine's still hanging up. So you're going to repeat this for your three holes, just pushing them down in there, making them all secure. And there you go. You'll see this is what this will be hung by. And yes, they're super long, and I do cut them. But for right now, like I said, I wasn't sure how much I was going to need to hang it. Okay, so all of our beads are on now. It's time for the light. So this set I got off Amazon. It is so neat. I actually got my girls these for Christmas, and I had an extra set of it. It's this clear, like, light, I don't want to say light bar, but it's like a light strip. And the cool thing is, is one, it's remote, because if this is hanging up, it's going to be a lot easier if you have the remote. And two, it's different colors. So once I put my batteries in the pack, I need to secure it inside my pot. I love Velcro command strips. And these ones actually were a sample, so these were like, heavy duty ones. But what I do is I just Velcro them together and I'm using two um, here because I want it extra wide. So I just put the Velcros in the end and then I'm going to peel one side and adhere it to my battery pack and then I will secure that nice and then I will take the sticker off the other side and secure it tight inside my pot. And in case you're wondering, I did not purposely paint my fingernails the same as this project. I just happened to really like purple. And I also have to say that my five-year-old is blown away by this project. She loves it and asks if we can turn it on every night. Unfortunately, she's usually in bed before dark and doesn't get to see it. So one night, I guess we'll have to let her stay up late so she can see the magic of this party chandelier. Okay, so now the lights are nice and secure, and this really held well. Again, I said this has been hanging for about a week, and so far, so good. So now we've got our lights, and I suggest turning them on. I found it easier to um, put the lights on when they're actually, or put the light, um, what am I trying to say here? String the lights <laughs> when they're on. And so that is what um, I found is best. So I went to the area where the cord's coming out and I'm gonna feed it through the closest side of the pot. And then I'm going to bring it to the farthest side of the pot and then back to the inside of the pot and back to the outside. And I'm just gonna continue this all the way around the pot.
Okay, so here is a close-up of how I have strung these lights. Again, I went from the inside all the way to the outside, back to the inside, and I just followed this um, zigzag pattern all the way around. And then for me, I had some excess light, um, excess strand left, and so I went ahead and strung that inside. And since I had that wire in there from where we um, attached the wreath frame, it worked out great. I could just wrap these lights right around that um, wire and it held it into place really well. So I didn't have to add anything extra. I just kind of let them sit on that. And that's it, you guys. That's it. It's ready to party. So for the next um, frame here, you're going to see this hung in daylight. You know, it's cute. A little more exciting at night. But look at how the beads hang. It's just fun. Um, even in the daylight, um, the lights are fun and it hangs. I try to get all sorts of different angles because I just felt like this video was not capturing it well enough. Like it looks so fun in person. Um, but don't worry because I come back out at night to show you what it does. Now I'm just kind of playing around with the features, the light changing. Okay, so I came back out. It's not quite dark, but you know, it's summertime and it's not getting dark until like nine o'clock. <laughs> so I came out and it's pretty dark. So this is what it looks like. I just have it on the one light setting right here. I just loved the blue light with the purple, but see how it just glows off those beads? It's really fun. And then I'm gonna play around here because this set that I have has all sorts of different colors. It blinks. Um, it's just super fun. And um, I'm just going to have this up all summer. When we sit outside, we'll just kind of have a good time. Here it is changing its colors. And again, this is all remote control, so you don't have to I hope you enjoyed these summer DIYs. And until next time, happy crafting.